Welcome back to another episode of Hobby Adventures. Today we are going to unbox the Cobalt IP Digital Point Motor from DCC Concepts. I have two Cobalt IP Digital Point Motors, thanks to Rich, uh, BN Railnut, if you guys don't know who he is. I'm gonna throw a link uh, about over here. I can't remember if it's that side or this side, but I'm gonna throw a, a card right up over here. And uh, so let's get this unboxing going. All right, so we'll pick one, pick, pick, left, right, right, left, 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 right. Uh, let's go for the right one. So packaging is pretty simple, kind of like it. Uh, there's a lot of information over here, right? As we slide this out, this is pretty innovative that uh, what they did over here. So instead of having extra paper, in here for the manual it's actually the backing for it so that's pretty cool uh, yeah so you have your information your wiring diagram different ways of doing it let's see what we have here we have some mounting hardware all right so we have some screws the piano wire the pivot point thing okay, now in here what we have is Okay, now this spongy thingy, double-sided spon uh, sticky sponge thing, makes life a lot easier to install. So when you're underneath the layout <clears throat> and you've pinpointed more or less where it's gonna go, what you do is you peel the one side, put it on here, then you peel the other side and you put it up against the table and uh, it, it makes life a little bit easier for mounting. So that's, that's pretty cool. It's lightweight, it's versatile. You could mount it either like this or this way, or whatever the application that you need it for. Uh, down over here, what we have are terminal sets. So all you just have to do is pull this back, insert your wire, and then let it go. So we have eight points here, clearly marked. And then your, um, your switch for programming, your programming switch. Now the one thing nice about the DCC concepts, what they did here, is when you get your IP digital point motor, this arm is set to center, so and it's locked, so you can't move it. This makes things a lot easier when you're centering the switch and you're installing it. Because that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that the switch is in the center position, as well as this, whether it's this or the Smail switch motor. Uh, um, in here, it tells you what CV you have to change to unlock it. So, but we'll, we'll get to that. All right guys, so DCC Concept did a really good job labeling everything. The one thing you just gotta pay attention to is do not mistaken these two inputs to the DCC bus line. This is for push button uh, activation only. If you put your power cables in here, you, you might fry the decoder that's in this motor. Anyway, so you're gonna look over here, DCC in, DCC in. So ports number one and two, that's where we're gonna put our cables. So I went ahead and I rigged myself some wire to alligator clips and getting the power from the bus, from the main, not from the program truck, but from the main line. So we go ahead and just insert our cables into these terminals. Push down on this tab here. Insert the cable all the way down. Let go, give a little tug, nice and secure. Then the same thing for the other one. Give a little tug, there you go. Now I just have to make sure that these two alligator clips do not touch each other. So I am gonna lie this down as so. Next thing you wanna do is before you turn on your system, check to see if this switch right here is uh, set to the run position, which it is, it's up. S some of the older IP motors, you're gonna see the switches on the back side here, but uh, for, in, for this case, it's on this side. The first thing that we have to do is we have to deactivate the self-centering option on this switch motor. You go into your accessory options. Next, go to your bottom right to the wrench. We're going to add an accessory. Pick your block. I am going to type in over here cold bolt. Okay. 
center off. Now the address that you want to enter is 198. Hit that check mark, hit the um, spanner, and now you have the option over here, uh, cobalt center off. So let's go back to the cobalt. All right, so the one thing that we're gonna wanna do is we are gonna turn on the track power, go to the cobalt switch, and switch it on to set, or to learn mode. Now with that said, we are gonna do this. We're gonna activate the switch once, twice. DCC Concepts suggests that we do this action twice, so we did it twice. Now we are gonna return the switch to run mode. And now we have to cycle the power. Depending on your system, you may have to unplug it or with the ECOS, you can just hit the stop button. Count five, four, three, two, one. Turn it back on. Now, the thing is, we don't know if it worked or not because it doesn't twitch, it doesn't move or anything. But what, the next thing that we're gonna do, we are going to sign the Cobalt a new address. So now to do that, we have to put the switch back into learn mode. We have to throw a switch. So this is going to be the power facility in, throw the switch once, throw the switch twice. Put the switch back into run mode and now cycle the power. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 5. Turn it back on and throw the switch and see if it works. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, yeah, there it goes. Yeah, let's flip that back over, throw the switch. Throw the switch. Dun, da, da, da. It has now been programmed. Now, in order for us to put the swing arm back into the center position so that we can install the cobalt, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make another switch over here. So let's add another. And this is going to be an address of 199. I'm just going to change this over here so I know what I'm looking at. Voila. Now we've made a new accessory to turn it back onto the centering. Once again, we come back to the cobalt, set it to the set position, touch the address 199, the cobalt center on that we've created once, twice. Take the switch back to run, turn off your power, cycle your power, 1, 1000, 2, 1000, 3, turn it back on and it's gonna find the center. So it goes to one side, to the other side, now back to the center. Now this is set for installing. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the other motor and uh, same process, but this time it's gonna be a different address. Okay, so now let's say that you wanna, for whatever reason, you need it to throw the opposite direction. You need it to be reversed. So you need left to be open and right to be closed or vice versa. The way to do that is this. I'm gonna make another accessory over here. Okay, so for the address on that one, it's going to be 197. Da, 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 da. So that means that we need to change this address to 197. We hit the OK. Okay, let's make that one as the reverse throw. Okay, that's done. We exit. The third one over here is to reverse the throw, just in case if we need uh, the machine to operate backwards. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the cobalt, put the switch back onto set, and we're gonna throw the switch two times. One, two, three, 
2. Put the switch back onto run mode, cycle the power by turning it off, and turn it back Guys, on. Sorry about the glare in the background. On the right you have my old snail switch motor, on the left you have the cobalt. You can see the difference there of the height. The cobalt, that's the factory given throw bar. And on the right is the throw bar that I had to extend when I when I got the snail switch motors. So I'm gonna have to make some new throw bars for the cobalt switch motors. I just finished cutting and trimming the wire to this length that I need. So this is 0 0.032 music wire. So that's what I'm using. I just cut it to length. And now the next thing that we're gonna need to do is center the switch. Now what, am I, what I mean by that is this right here. We have to center it. So we have to have the switch more or less here. Now to achieve that, we have to get rid of the little tiny spring that's here. The spring that is right there, that little tiny piece that goes on an angle, that spring on this Pico turnout, we have to pull it out. Uh, best way to do it is literally just take a pointy tweezers and just pull it out. So let's go ahead and do that. So as I said, pointy tweezers. Now you're gonna see there's a pin right here and a pin right there that holds out the spring. So, just, you're gonna have to be a little, um, be a little aggressive. Well, not that aggressive. There he goes. So, okay. This thing is kind of like a zigzag Z. So there you go. Remove this. Now you can just put that somewhere else. And now the pin, now the switch is freely. What you want to do is center it. So this is what I do. Now installing the road bed and the track, I used these bobby pins. Now what ended up happening was over time, the heads came off, but I still kept the, the pin itself. And then what I did was I just bent the edges like so. So now how I keep this centered true the throw bar is going to come out on this side of the track. So on this side right here, I'm going to put that pin. And this is going to keep the, the switch from moving back and forth. And it's going to keep it in the true position of center of my center anyways. Now once that is done, we're going to go underneath the layout and we're going to install the switch motor as we can. So we're going to slowly feed the, the throw bar up through the hole on this and then we're going to screw it down. Okay, so we're underneath the layout looking directly at the hole that we need to uh, deal with. So this is the, the hole that the throw bar is going to go in. This is the green wire right here is the frog. But the first thing that we're going to do, and this is where the cobalt really stands out, is this sponge here, this mounting sponge. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to peel the one side, and I'm going to stick this to the, to the top of the cobalt. Okay, so as you can see, it's installed nicely. I'm going to just drill some pilot holes. And now our mounting screws. Okay, now the way I'm gonna be doing this is I'm gonna put a screw on this side and one on the other side staggered. It is installed. Uh, this is that throw bar that I was telling you about. It has to come up right through there. And it's nice and centered. So it's centered on the cobalt, it's centered on the track. Next thing to do is to take out this pin that I put in here to keep the switch straight or centered and then you have to cut this off over here see look at that nice and straight nice and centered we cut off and trimmed the throw bar over here now the next step to do is to run a train past to see if this throw bar has been trimmed down enough uh, i'm pretty sure it is i'm pretty confident it is it's about uh, track level and I'm pretty happy with it. So let's go ahead and run a train, see what happens.
that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Had lots of fun installing. Can't wait to see how these motors work out. Just doing this little run by here for you guys. Something a little bit different. Just remember, keep on modeling. Until next time, guys. Have a good one.